verses 13 to 17. Matthew chapter. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Lord, thank you for this time to be with you. I believe in you. I believe that you are here with me and that you want to speak to me today. I wish to open my heart to hear your word and put it into practice out of love for you. Lord, help me to grow in the virtue of humility. Jesus lines up with sinners. John was preaching a baptism of repentance, and large numbers of people were coming to John to repent of their sins. They wanted to change the direction of their lives and be reconciled with God. Jesus came along with the crowd. Even though he is the sinless one, he numbered himself among the others and proceeded to the Jordan as if he, too, were a sinner like them. To appreciate this gesture, we need only to recall how much we resent it when we are perceived as guilty for something we didn't do. It's even costly to have our real faults pointed out to others. Yet here, even when he is so far from the slightest stain of guilt, Jesus peacefully and humbly accepts being labeled a sinner like everyone else. He does this for our sake. Am I overly concerned about how I appear to others so that this negatively affects my good deeds? A humility that bows to the Father's will. John did not want to baptize Jesus because he knew that Jesus was not like the others. Yet Jesus made it clear that this was part of the Father's plan, and this plan was the driving force in his life. Pride did not get in the way of Jesus' obedience. Rather, his Father's will was the food that fed and nourished his life. My food is to do the will of the Father and to finish his work. What does my own heart feed on? If it is not fed on the Father's will, then could pride be subtly at work, turning me into my own highest purpose? A Father's Blessing Heaven responded to Christ's obedience. This moment foreshadows the definitive opening of heaven to mankind's salvation, accomplished through Christ's sacrifice on Calvary. The heart of sacrifice is obedience, and obedience is not possible without humility. Jesus humbled himself before John the Baptist. The Father saw his obedience and was pleased, praising him out loud. This is my beloved Son. To listen to him is to follow his example. Lord, thank you for the gift of yourself. Teach me to be humble. It is hard for me to put others ahead of myself, to take second place, to let others win the praise and glory I crave for myself. Help me to be humble and to seek repentance from all sin in my life. I need your help to do your will. Strengthen and guide me in your service. Daily Meditations of Pope Benedict XVI Presented by Leonardo De Filippis of St. Luke Productions Searching for someone We are asking, where do I find standards to live by? On whom can I rely? To whom shall I entrust myself? Where is the one who can offer me the response capable of satisfying my heart's deepest desires? Asking such questions means searching for someone who can neither deceive nor be deceived, and who therefore can offer a certainty so solid that we can live for it and, if need be, even die for it. Dear friends, 
When questions like these appear on the horizon of life, we must be able to make the necessary choices. It is like finding ourselves at a crossroads. Which direction do we take? The one prompted by the passions, or the one indicated by the star which shines in your conscience? The Magi heard the answer in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And enlightened by these words, they chose to press forward to the very end. From Jerusalem, they went on to Bethlehem. In other words, they went from the word which showed them where to find the King of the Jews, to whom they were seeking, all the way to the end, to an encounter with the King who was at the same time the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Those words are also spoken for us. This meditation is taken from Benedictus, published by Ignatius Press and Magnificat, and produced by St. Luke Productions. Learn more at stlukeproductions.com. Today is Monday, the 9th of January, the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord. Abbey of Kermusa sing the canticle from Philippians. Christ Jesus, though his state was divine, did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as human beings are. Le Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, Suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God 
descending like a dove, and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Many see this moment of the baptism of Jesus as a turning point in the gospel, the point at which Jesus, who until then might have appeared to be an ordinary man, receives the Holy Spirit and is announced as Son of God. Some even suggest that for Jesus too, this is the moment when his own sense of who he is is clarified and confirmed, and he is empowered for his mission of salvation. How do you imagine it? Does it feel to you like a momentous event, a cosmic moment, or something a little bit lower key than that? John the Baptist expresses surprise that Jesus submits himself to being baptized by him. Yet Jesus does submit himself. There is a certain graciousness in the way these two cousins defer to each other, respect each other, you might say, love each other. How do you imagine them as they speak to one another? Their tone of voice the look in their eyes. A good number of filmmakers have tried to reconstruct this scene, some with more glitz and razzmatazz and special effects than others. As you hear the scene described once more, try to picture it in your mind. The river, a torrent or a little stream, the kind of terrain, dry and rocky or green and fertile, the people who are there. What does it all look like and sound like?
the scene ends with that voice from heaven. How did you imagine that? A deep, booming voice like in the movies? Or something quiet and gentle? What do you think God's voice is like? Do you ever hear it? Or sense it yourself? Do you sense God expressing his favor, his love for you? Now it's your turn, the time for your voice to speak. Perhaps after spending some time with this scene, there is something you want to ask or say to Jesus. Or perhaps you want to speak to God the Father about the way you hear his voice. Or perhaps you want to invite the Holy Spirit to a light to settle on you too. Spend these last moments of the prayer time saying whatever it is you want to say. Glory be to the Father, and, and to the Son, Son and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen.